background is chemical engineering. So I went to Georgia Tech and I worked in the pharmaceutical industry. And now professionally, I spend my time helping you guys figure out if you want to be an engineer, you want to be a marketing professional, design professional, mathematician, scientist, how you can do it. This is actually a showcase for the 1080 Student Racing Challenge NASCAR STEM initiative. Uh, a lot of schools, I think it's like eight schools in the Atlanta public school system, are implementing the program in their career technology classes. So they'll be teaching math lessons, physics lessons, and running a, an after school STEM club. And STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And so today, this is kind of a way to kick off the season, get them all excited about learning, um, learning math, learning physics, using NASCAR as a theme. Learn. I became a better engineer once I started doing this program. So now, first step is fun. You gotta learn how to drive the car, right? When you can drive the car well, then your teammates can help engineer the car. My car is traveling down the road, and all of a sudden I call into my radio on my radio and I say, Wow, I am traveling here and the car feels squirrely. And they say, come in, we'll put some weight on the front. They change the springs, they make the front heavier. And what do you think happens? Now it goes down and when it gets a little squirrely, the back tries to pass the front. Most of the kids are not racing fans, but interestingly enough, they'll become fans over time. Once you begin to realize where the strategy in racing is, it becomes interesting. So these four stations are set up to sort of explore that. This one behind us, they're learning to drive. So we use 10 scale RC cars. The students form uh, basically little mini NASCAR teams. You have to have a driver. So back here, they're just learning the controller and to drive and, and measure time and how that works. Over here on this station, they're actually looking at the force required to move a car. So it's talking about Newton's laws of motions but using RC cars. So looking at a different surface, how much force does it take to move a car along a bumpy surface, a sticky surface. So it's coefficient of friction and Newton's laws. We've also got our partner over here, um, uh, well, our partner here today in this exhibit. Uh, the people from NASA are over here in this space and the students are getting to rotate through and learn also about wheels and tires and friction using an experiment at their table and then working through a trailer to learn about all the ways that NASA has worked with the technology that drives NASCAR. Well, we're actually trying to expose them to different things uh, as far as uh, the educational part of it because a lot, uh, typically a lot of kids associate NASA with uh, the shuttle and rockets and we want to let them know that some of the uh, NASA uh, spin-off technology that NASA has developed as far as with the NASCAR events here with the tires, the uh, lubricants, as well as things that they may see in their home that uh, NASA has developed and uh, given back to the industry so they can use and uh, use throughout their life. Switch on this one. This is on. Switch is on the side. The, the funnest thing about it was the NASCAR. We had an event where some people that worked with NASCAR came, and it showed us how to how we can race the car, how fast the car goes, how we can take it apart, put it back together, and just have a have a real fun time where we could learn from other people how we can really operate the car. It relates to math because you have to use math to like figure out how many uh, inches the car is, how fast the car goes, how can you figure out the diameter and things like that. If I see a car I know what the name of it and I know how I can work the car now.